welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome to day 201. Glad to have you back. We are still continuing our journey through the book of Matthew. Uh, go ahead, if you haven't already, get your Bibles out and turn to Matthew chapter number 12. Matthew chapter number 12. I need to do the same thing. I, I turned my Bible to the book of Mark by accident. But Matthew chapter number 12. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we ask that by the end of this video, by the end of the day, we all grow in our relationship with you. Pray that you would speak through me this hour, that hearts would be tender, minds would be fo focused, uh, remove the devil and his distractions, and we come here to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Matthew chapter number 12. We are in verse number 15 now. Now remember, last time we left off, uh, the Pharisees, they're out to try to make a plan to kill Jesus, right? So verse number 15, it says, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. So Jesus knows of this plan. They're out to kill him. He's like, I'm out of here, okay? So we're going to skip some verses now and go to verse number 22. It says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. So he's got three things wrong with this guy. He's blind, dumb, and he's being possessed by a demon. Uh, it says, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So he cast the devil out. He's uh, The guy can see again. He can talk again. Uh, he Basically, he's back to normal, right? It says, all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? But, look at verse 24, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils, of the devils. So here Jesus heals this guy. He's got three things wrong with him, gets him back to normal. And people are like, wow, this guy's got to be related to David somehow. He's got to be, you know, he's been claimed to be the son of God. You know, what else can explain it? And the Pharisees come and say, we can explain it. He, the only way he can cast out a devil is if he's a devil himself. And it says there in verse 24, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Now, Beelzebub, uh, some commentators think, you know, he's a false god that other people worship. Uh, they also claim that Beelzebub was another name for Satan. And so basically the Pharisees, they want to try to disprove Jesus being the Son of God any way they can. Here we are in 2021 and there are still people out there. They look at the Bible or they hear the preaching of God's Word and they go, no way, not happening, no chance. Uh, Jesus might have been a man here on this earth, but he was not the Son of God. That's what a lot of people try to say, and the Pharisees are trying to say it even right here. They're like, okay, yeah, he healed that guy, but he didn't do it through the power of God. He did it through the power of Satan. Uh, let's look at verses 25 to 29. It says, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Verse 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I be, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Or how, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Okay, I know I just said a lot of words, but I'm just going to break it down for you very simply. Jesus is basically saying. He really points it out in verse 26. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Basically saying the devil wants people to be possessed by demons. The devil wants those followers out there uh, to follow him and to be of him. So why would he take time 
to cast a devil out of a person when that is a victory for Satan. He's basically saying Satan is smart. He's not going to hurt his own kingdom. Because don't be fooled, Satan does have a kingdom. All right, God's kingdom, way more powerful. God's kingdom does not involve any kind of pain. God's kingdom uh, is where we want to be. But Satan does have a kingdom and he's very smart and he's not going to use a human being to cast out the devil of another human being. That would just be foolish. And so Jesus is basically trying to prove the, well not trying to, he is. Jesus is proving the Pharisees wrong with these verses. Like your argument that I'm working on behalf of the devil or that your argument that I'm working on behalf of Beelzebub, the prince of devils, that makes no sense whatsoever. And he's also he also points out too, uh, verse 27, whom do your children cast them out? Because the Pharisees and the, their offspring, their children, they're also claiming to be able to cast devils out as well. He's like, if you guys are saying that I'm of the devil, who are you of? Right? He's basically kind of calling them out a little bit there. Uh, and then he, he tells them plainly in verse number 30. He says, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Notice that first part there. He that is not with me is against me. If you're not with me, you're against me. Jesus tells you there is no middle line. You cannot have one foot with Jesus and one foot with the world. You can't have one foot with God and one foot with the devil. You have to, have to choose a side. And if you do try to come down the middle and say, I'm with Jesus some of the time, Jesus tells you here in verse 30, no, you're not with me some of the time. You're against me all of the time. You are either with me or against me. He tells them very plainly, and, he, and that is still true to this day. You are either with God or you're against God. So what are you doing today? Think about what you've done this past week. Think about what you've done for January 2021. Have you been with God, for God, awesome for God? Or have your works and your heart been against God? Make sure you have the right choice every single day. All right, your questions were at the beginning. Are you with God or against God? We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.